A couple days ago, Professor Black Truth did an excellent address talking about how the palm colored Neanderthal has an obsession with a certain element that's contained in fictional, uh, I guess you could say, stories. And he used four examples. He used the Joker, he used American Psycho, he used Hannibal Lecter, and it was another character that he used, but I, couldn't, I can't think quite uh, what character that was. And these were all characters that became popularized in films over the years. And he says how a lot of people, a lot of white people in particular, obsess over these characters to the point where they start to act out and blame those characters for what they do. If y'all remember the movie Scream that came back, came out in the mid to late, like I would say the mid 90s, the main premise of the movie was them copying stuff that they saw in horror films and acting it out in real time. Well, this story right here is no different because it shows that people can often up, get obsessed with serial killings that happen in real life and then try to act out and copycat that exact thing. So meet this woman by the name of Soul Pay, or is it Soul Pie? Her last name is spelled P-A-I-S. And she had an obsession with Columbine. As many of you know, the 20th anniversary of Columbine is either coming up or it has just passed. It happened back in April of 1999. I remember it vividly. I was about, I was nine years old. I was getting ready to turn 10, but I remember it like ever so um, vividly because, you know, that's all they talked about on the news. I kept wondering why all these kids were running out of a high school with their hands on their heads. Like that was the image that I continued to see over and over and over again when it happened, but I didn't know all the details. As a matter of fact, if y'all have been around, or my original channel, when I did the White History Month, the two guys that were involved with the Columbine shooting were in contained in that White History Month series of videos that I did. But this woman right here had an obsession with Columbine to the point where she was planning to do her own version of it. She made threats to actually do another Columbine style shooting. But I guess, you know, they ended up catching on to her and then she ended up killing herself. I'm going to go ahead and read this article coming from USA Today. It said, after a massive one day manhunt, a woman allegedly infatuated with the Columbine mass shooting is dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. So Pai, who made credible threats against Denver area schools four days before the 20th anniversary. OK, so it was slightly it was a few days before. Anniversary of Columbine High School shooting, fatally shot herself. The 18. Now, they say she's 18. Now, if y'all look at this picture, does this chick look 18? Like, when I saw her picture, I could have sworn up and down that maybe she was maybe in her mid-30s. But 18? This chick already hit the wall before she was supposed to. Her, she hit the wall during her, what was supposed to be her best years. Her best years were already behind her during her best years. Is that the 18 year old allegedly South Florida woman flew Monday night from Miami to Colorado and bought a pump action shotgun and ammunition at a gun shop in the Littleton area of Colorado, not far from Columbine High School. Schools on lockdown across the Denver area were set to reopen Thursday. We are relieved that the threat to our schools and our community is no longer present. While the threat has been the most significant, it is not the only challenge facing our schools and our communities in these days leading up to the Columbine anniversary. I appreciate our community's patience as we continue to navigate these difficult issues. From Surfside, Florida, where Pi lived with her family, Police Chief Julio Yero said, I would like to express the family's grief for the situation. They are grateful that no one else is hurt. He commended the FBI, law enforcement in Colorado, and even the Pi family for their work to find the teen. The collaboration pr probably prevented a tragedy. This family contributed greatly to this investigation from the very onset. They provided us valuable information that led us to Colorado. Euro was a senior at Miami Beach Senior High School student. She was said to be reserved and enrolled in advancement placement class. It appears that she had an interest in guns. One person identified as So Pie ran an online blog that included pictures of guns and journal entries filled with the angst and other disturbing messages. The purpose of this site is for me to give insight into the thoughts I rarely, if ever, share with others while remaining somewhat anonymous. Everything from journal entries to my personal beliefs. I want to leave a record of myself before I well, the blog says. In the About Me section, the individual wrote, I am the face of the loneliness and misery. I'm the face of loneliness and misery. 
USA Today was not able to independently confirm that the blog belonged to Pi. A person with the same screen name, Dissolved Girl, posted on the National Gun Forum message board with, about living in Miami and traveling to Colorado to buy a gun. Law enforcement did not say whether the person was Pi. Pi's parents reported her missing Monday night, according to the Surfside Police Department. The FBI's Rocky Mountain Safe Street Task Force issued a notice Tuesday that said police who come in contact with Pi should detain her and evaluate her mental health. Sheriff spokesman Mike Taplin said the threats she made were general and not specific to any Colorado school. The Denver, Douglas County, and Cherry Creek school districts called off Wednesday classes, activities, and athletics at all schools late Tuesday night, citing safety concerns related to a credible threat against the schools in the area. The Jefferson County School District, which includes Columbine, also called off classes on Wednesday. Earlier authorities released several photos of Pi, including described as having brown hair sometimes wearing glasses she was last seen wearing a black t-shirt camouflage pants and black boots april 20th is an emotional date for many denver area area parents and students because of the anniversary of the columbine shooting in which two students killed 12 of their classmates and a coach before killing themselves there's typically an uptick in threats made to schools around that time every year all students and staff are safe students will be released from schools normally buses will be running on normal schedule we will have extra security and staff on site at all schools affected. So it sounds like, it, like I said, to me, she sounds like she was getting ready to, ready to do another Columbine style shooting all the way down to the part of her killing herself with a self inflicted gunshot wound to the head. The only difference is she wasn't able to carry out her plan because they were able to put the pieces of the puzzle together and was able to get her before she got somebody else. And ironically, this happens in Colorado. Do y'all remember what happened in 2012 in Aurora, Colorado, around the July month during when a certain big movie came out by the name of The Dark Knight Rises? You had James Holmes in a movie theater with people unsuspecting pulled out a military assault-like rifle, well, weapon, and sprayed the place like it was a damn mafia hit. But like I said, this like I said, this goes all the way back to what Professor Black Truth addressed in his video. But the only difference is he was addressing how they identify with those who are fictional characters. He might have touched on real life people, but this is pretty much no different. Only the she's identified or obsessed with people who actually kill people in real life. And like I said, this is not surprising because how many times have we seen uh, white people, individuals, whether man or woman, and in some cases a child, teenagers, obsess over the torturing and the brutal murder of people and decided that they were going to try to mimic that. Look at what these teachers did this past Black History Month where they were having the black students dress up as slaves and had the white students pretend to be slave masters. But then they want to sit there and try to tell us to get over it. But they want to pick that part of history out and make fun of us and mock us now i'm not gonna sit here and tell uh what black people should do around halloween i've actually alluded to that in a couple of my videos in the past y'all have to put it together what i'm talking about but y'all let me know what you think about this down in the comments and i will talk to you in the next one